it's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Oh yes it is! Here we are at the start of a brand new chapter, Polynomials. This is lesson one, so this will be an introduction and then maybe looking at some previous knowledge. Because believe it or not, we have come across polynomials already. Oh yes. So, first of all, what is a polynomial then? Well, a polynomial is an expression that looks something like this. You can see we've got x to the power of 5, x to the power of 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. And the letters a, b, c, d, e, and f are just going to be constant. They are just numbers. For example, you could have 3x to the power of 5, add 12x to the power of 4, minus 7x to the power of 3, and so on. So expressions like that are known as polynomials. You would say this is a polynomial of degree 5 because 5 is the highest power. You can see there's an x to the power of 5, there's not an x to the power of a number bigger than that. So that is a polynomial of degree 5. You do not have to include every single power though. You could have this. This is also a polynomial and that one is going to be of degree, you got it, degree 12. Good, because 12 is the highest power. You can see here, we've got 3a to the power of 12, add 8 a to the power of 7, add a squared minus 4. So we've not got every single power there, but it's still going to be a polynomial. Also, that is going to be a polynomial. Why would that be a polynomial? Ms. Amel? Yes, you are perfectly right, because you could multiply it out. And if you multiply it out, you end up with 2x squared minus x minus 15. So really, that's a polynomial of degree 2. As I just said, you do not require all the powers, but when you write them, you'll see all the examples here. The powers are in descending order, so that's really how you should write it. Words that we're going to come across in this chapter, words that we've come across in the past, so this is a recap. Coefficient. What's the coefficient? Well, it's a number that's in front of a certain variable. The variable, be, the variable being the letter. So here the variable is x, here the variable is a. So the coefficient is the number in front of a certain variable. So in this example here, the coefficient of x cubed is negative 7. In this example, what's the coefficient of x to the power of 5? Go on, shout it out. You got it. It's 9. Well done. Another word that we will come across in this chapter, which we have met in the past, is a root. What is meant by the root? Well, a root of a polynomial function is the value of x that makes the function equal to 0. In other words, if you graphed it, it's the value of x where the graph would cross the x-axis. So in here you can see there are two roots. There's a root down here and there's a root over here. So it's the value of x where y is 0. As I said, we have come across polynomials in the past. Different things we have done with them is, for example, drumroll, we can factorise polynomials and that is something we've already done. Let's take these three examples. Let's go through factorising. What's the first thing you look for when you factorise Lily? Well done. Highest common factor. Well done. So the highest common factor here is 5x. If you put the rest into brackets, you will have x squared minus 2. So factorising polynomials is something that we've done. What's the second thing, Lily, that you look for when you factorise? Perfect. Difference of two squares. So here you can see that 9 is a squared number, x squared is obviously squared, 16 is a squared number, and it is a difference, it's a minus in there. So you can split it up, so you've got 3x minus 4 and 3x plus 4. After that, let's factorise the third one. There's no highest common factor. It's definitely not a difference of two squares because there's three terms. So the last thing is just factorising a trinomial. You may do this slightly differently from me. It doesn't matter which way you do it as long as you're getting the right answer. What I would do is I would do the 6 times negative 5, that is a negative 30. Ignore the negative and take factors of 30. So think of numbers that multiply to give 30. Think of them in pairs. So I've got 1 times 30, or 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 5 times 6. Using those numbers, I want to somehow make negative 7. And because I'm multiplying these to make 30, well really I'm multiplying them to make negative 30. And to get a negative, you need a positive and a negative number. So to make negative 7, how could you do that? Perfectly right. A few people saying it. You can have the 3 and the 10, and you would have 3 take away 10. So from there, you can replace negative 7x 
with a negative 10x and a plus 3x. Keep the 6x squared as it is, keep the negative 5 as it is, you're just rewriting that negative 7x. From there, factorize the first two terms. So take these two terms and factorize them. Highest common factor is 2x, so it's 2x times that 3x minus 5. Plus, after that, factorize the last two terms. Here, the highest common factor is 1. This is the only time, really, that you would take out 1 as the highest common factor. So you'd have 1 times that 3x minus 5. From there, the highest common factor, well, really, you're factorizing again, and you're taking 3x minus 5 out as a common factor. And you're left with 2x and a plus 1. So that is how you'd factorize trinomials. A very quick recap. Something else that we've done with polynomials? Well, a quadratic is a polynomial, and last year we had to find the roots of a quadratic. So that is something that we'll have to build on this time around. Finding the roots, well, it's the values of x that make this equal to zero. So we've got to solve that, and you can solve it different ways. One way to do it is to add 12 to both sides, divide both sides by three, take the square root. Remember to include the positive and the negative. However, I'm going to be a factorizing. Taking out three is the highest common factor, after that, you're left with a bit in brackets, which is difference of two squares. So three times x minus two, x plus two, and set each bracket equal to zero. Once you do that, if x minus two was equal to zero, x would equal two. And if x plus two was equal to zero, x would be minus two. As I said, you would get the same uh, answers if you did it the other way, but just make sure you remember to take the positive and the negative when you take the square root. Don't just say x equals two, because you'd be missing out half your answer. So the roots, therefore, are going to be 2 and negative 2. And something else that we've done, something else with previous knowledge, if you think back to functions, well, we've been evaluating functions with different values of x. So with this example here, evaluate f of x equals 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 6x minus 4 for x equals 2. So we're starting off with f of x. If x was 2, we'd be wanting to work out f of 2. So we're replacing x with 2. So over here, replace every single x with 2. So it's 3 times 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 squared plus 6 times 2. If you simplify that, you'd have 3 times 8 minus 2 times 4 add 6 times 2 minus 4, which gives us 24 take 8 and 12 take 4, which gives us 24. So that is us evaluating this polynomial for a certain value of x. So that's what polynomials are. As I said, we have come across them in the past, and that is some examples of what we've done. Try this exercise, see how you are with it, because you will be building on this knowledge. So make sure you're absolutely fine with everything here. Practice it. Anything you're unsure of, make sure you ask before you move on. Good luck. Have fun. Enjoy. So long. See ya.